Shalom, Yashallah, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to the Most High Yahweh. I do so in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Yasha Allah. Call Hulayim La Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai Bahasham Harakakudash for blessing our elders with the spirit of truth so that we may know. Shout out to the Akim and Akwa that's keeping the faith and the work. Shall keep at it. It's your brother Abaya coming at you with more precepts. It's the book of Baruch, chapter 4, and verse 1. It says, This is the book of the commandments of power and the law that endureth forever. All they that keep it shall come to life, but such as leave it shall die. Right? The whole Bible, the whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation, including the Apocrypha, is valid. The whole scriptures, all of these scriptures, all of these precepts are valid instructions and inspired um, by the spirit of the Lord and it all should be respected as such you got people out there that claim you got man even in the in the, I can't even say they in the truth all the way man because of what they um, the stuff that they speak scripture says it's not what goes into a man that defiles him but what comes out of him meaning whatever you say you know what I'm saying because we all take in um different doctrines but it's it's about what you speak on what you believe what you live what you what you know is the truth because what you know is the truth that's what you're going to tell you know the people All right? that's what you're going to teach the people the truth so um yeah like i said i heard some wild stuff man like you got uh hebrew israelites that say the new testament in itself ain't valid that you should only follow the Old Testament, right? You got uh, Hebrew Israelites that say Paul's writings are not valid, right? You you got different <laughs> different people. You got you, you got different uh, uh, Hebrew Israelites that say the Apocrypha is not valid, right? So you got different people that want to pick the Bible apart, which is crazy to me because it's the whole scriptures that we should follow. The original King James Version Bible has all of that, right? Has the whole scriptures and none of it contradicts itself. So that that, that allows you to be able to believe that it stands um, um, in validity, man, right? So let me go to um, 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy. All right, Second Timothy chapter three and verse sixteen. It says, "All Scripture, not some, all Scripture." And this is Second Timothy. This is New Testament, right? This is this is uh, um, going into Paul, going into uh, um, uh, um, yeah, Timothy, you know, Peter. These are writings that people say <laughs> don't take serious. Like this is not the word of God, right? Which is, like I said, man, it's crazy to me, right? But it says all scripture is given by inspiration of God and it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works, right? This how you this how you show yourself good, man, by by. You know, following what thus says the Lord, and all of this is thus says the Lord, right? Like I said, what Paul writes, Paul uh, tells you to order of a household, right? So if you take Paul out the midst, then you, I guess your household is in chaos, right? There's so many other, so many other attributes, man. Romans nine in itself, man. Are you serious, right? It's just crazy, man. That's crazy, right? But see, the reason why a lot of people, um, you know, try to dissect the scriptures to say, well, this is valid and this ain't, is because they don't understand all of the scriptures. Now, I'm not saying that I can break down the whole Bible and if you want to learn, you know, the the, the whole true gospel, um, you know, um, 
and all of the mysteries that's inside of it, you need to be listening to me. If you ain't listening to me, then you ain't in the truth. I ain't saying that at all. Right? But truly and sincerely, man, if you don't believe that the whole Bible is inspired by the Spirit of the Lord, then where the hell your mind at, man? Like, just being real, you either sold out or, or the most high just really ain't dealing with you like that. And what, what little knowledge you do possess, you just use that as a front to show yourself as a knowledgeable individual. Right? Basically, you doing it for clout. It ain't sincere for real. Right? That's crazy. That is, that is wild to me. Let me go to the book of Second Peter. Second Peter chapter three and verse fourteen. I said the reason why a lot of these individuals try to dissect the scriptures is because they have no understanding about so it may come a certain topic. Like for instance, um, I believe it's Son of the Morning. Right? I could be wrong, but I believe Scripture calls basically Scripture calls um the Messiah the Son of the Morning. And I think it's in Revelation. Like I said, I could be wrong. But if you go into the words, you go into the Hebrew of it, you go into the definition of like Lucifer. You go into the definition of Lucifer, it just basically means light bearer, right? So it's it's basically a, a, a transfer of knowledge. It's a it's a it's a it's showing that that Yahweh Shai is the light, right? He holds the light. Right? But if you read if you read certain scriptures and it throws your mind in a certain in a certain way. And a lot of people take on um, the scriptures uh, uh, as what it is. And when I say that, I mean, as far as the English English goes, they take the English words and run with it. I mean, you can't do that, right? You got to go and research where, where these words come from. Like, what does this mean? Going to the Hebrew of it, going to the Greek of it to get proper understanding of these things. It say it in the... In the uh, um, what's that? Matter of fact, let me go there right quick. I'll come back here. Let me see. All right, the prologue of Sirach. Let's see if I can find it. Right. So I don't know if you can. Let me see. Let me put it right at the bottom. Right on top of that ad, it says, For the same things uttered in Hebrew and translated into another tongue have not the same force in them, and not only these things, but the law itself, and the prophets, and the rest of the books have no small difference when they are spoken in their own language. Right? It's different. When you go into the Hebrew of it, because it holds more weight, because it's more close to original, it's more it's more close to the spirit. When you go into the origin of these words, but a lot of people they choose not to do so, right? And let me go to let me go back to um, to Second Peter three, right? They choose not to do so, and when they run with their English, man, it, it throw them they throw their mind in a loop and. You know what I'm saying? That's where false doctrines come about. But uh, 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 14. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. And account that the long suffering of Yahweh, by Shem Yahweh Shai, is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul also, according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you. Right? As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they have, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest mean wrestle with, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. Right? So they can't get that understanding because the Most High didn't allow them to get that understanding. Right? Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai is the 
It's the one that gave the understanding to the apostles, man. When he was speaking in, in parables, the apostles would come to the Messiah with questions. And the Messiah would say, well, this, this is for you to understand. It ain't for everybody to understand. It. Then he would give the understanding to the apostles. Right? So the Spirit of the Lord really got to be dealing with you to see all of this word, all of these precepts, the whole scriptures, man, the whole Bible. Right? Now I said the original King James Version Bible because King James was, uh, he was us. He is us. Right? That was our last stand. That was our, uh, uh, the most high blessing us with our scriptures in this English language because it was already understood that the English language was, was about to be dominant, right? It was time for Esau to take over, and Esau's preferred language is English, right? So when King James did what he did, allowed the, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, the scriptures to be interpreted, right? What books were in that Bible, right? Old Testament, Apocrypha, New Testament, for a reason, right? For a reason, man. <clears throat> Let me go to Romans chapter 15. All right? And this is the reason. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. Can you imagine a world without the scriptures, a world without the Bible, right? What if they just left everything in the Hebrew, left everything in the Greek, and we don't speak none of that, right? And the dominant language is uh, is English. It'd been, it been it would be so much harder to get the understanding of the scriptures. So the Most High made it do what it do, right? And allowed us to get the understanding in our captivity. All of the scriptures, man. All of it, man. All right, so if you listen to listening to somebody and they talking about well this part of the Bible, don't take this serious, or well, that part of the Bible, don't pay no attention to it, man. You better leave them folk alone, boss, because you don't you you don't know everybody. We don't know everybody. Just like you don't know me, you don't know me, All right? And I don't know you. Only thing we can do is uh, pray to the Father to bless us with discernment. And, and pray that the Most High lead us to righteousness, and that righteousness is coming um, through the through the uh, through the mouth of the, of the prophets. Right? And, you know, if that's what the Most High deem me to be, then call Elohim like Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai for it. If not, call Elohim Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai for it. Whatever, whatever, and however the Most High Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai want to use me, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai for it. it's for his, for his right hand sake, for his righteousness sake, and and. and no, it is what it is. But watch these folks, man, that's out here, you know what I'm saying? Everything flashing, everything extra big, and you know what I'm saying? Everything look like money. It look like money for a reason because they getting money, right? Yeah, we all understand in this world it ain't easy to get money unless you, you know, you switching up some things, Right? If you're trying to live as righteous as you can be, righteous as you possibly can be, you, you may not have funds like that. It says it in the scripture, man. Let's go to the book of Matthew chapter 5. All right, Matthew chapter 5 and verse 1. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Right? Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Meek is hum meek to be meek is to be humble. You can't get more humble than uh, uh, being in a poor estate and seeing wealth all around you and knowing that you... Uh, you really can't get that wealth, and it ain't got nothing to do with it. your hustle. It ain't got nothing to do with your um your go get it attitude. It got everything to do with your morals, stuff. What you will and won't do for money, the understanding of money, right? Understanding of wealth, right? It ain't worth it. If I gotta sell my soul, what scripture say? Uh, uh, 
what profited a man to, to gain the world but lose his soul? Right, you gaining all of these funds and everything, but you losing your soul, and that's what I'm telling you, man. These folk that pushing them false doctrines, telling you don't pay no attention to this part of the scripture, don't pay no attention to that writing, don't pay no attention to this to this part of the book, man. Leave them folk alone, bro. Cause nine times out of ten, they chasing a dollar. Either that, or the Most High just ain't giving them the understanding to be able to understand these hard, dark sayings, right? As simple as that. Right? So, let me see. Let me go to... um. Actually, let me go back to Second Peter. I'm going to read verse 16 again. It says, As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, meaning wrestle with, unstable. Right? Let me see. 2 Peter 3, 16. We're going to look up that word unstable. 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 16. Let's see. Strong's G, 793, Astatictus, Astatictus. Astatictus, unstable, unsteadfast, right? Strong definition, let's see. Mm, from G1 as a negative particle and a presumed derivative, unfixed, so, i.e. figuratively facilitated, Vacillating, 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 unstable, right? Unstable, man. Listening to these folks that are unstable, going to and fro, wrestling, right? Trying to get this understanding and ultimately come to the to the conclusion. Man, you know what? I can't get it, so that means it ain't valid. So we ain't got to pay no attention to this part of the scripture. I don't understand this, so you know what? We ain't gonna we ain't gonna worry about the new test. We're gonna put that to the man, stop, man. Right, man, stop. Right? Scripture tells us to be circumspect, so you better make sure you're doing so. So I ended with that, man. How about Shimia Shah out to these precepts in this video with edifying? Call Holoyim La Yahweh Shamiahwa Shai Baha Shamharakakudash Shalom Yashaba.